As quickly as you can. Snatch the pebble from my hand. When you take the pebble from my hand, it will be time for you to leave. The people, your job, whatever. When you get into your creative area, you need to be comfortable. If you're not comfortable, it's not ever, it's not gonna come out. It's gonna come out, but it ain't gonna come out the way at its best as it should. You hear me? So That's a nugget. to make sure when you create it, you comfortable in your space. You own in that space. That's you. This is everything in here right now is vibrations moving towards energy charged up and like look like Yeah, that's my boy CJ. He is a mixed martial artist fighting out of Tiger Muay Thai. He is uh, a fighter who fights in the flyaway division. And let me tell you, uh, he's got a lot, a lot of good stuff to share. Really get ready for an awesome episode. We go into a lot of great things. We discuss cutting weight, uh, competing at the highest level. I mean, he just saw a quick video of him fighting against uh, or just training with Peter Yan of the UFC. I mean, he's, it's definitely an electrifying episode. Uh, another self-promoting opportunity uh, This episode is brought to you by Enter the Last Dragon Tell a friend to tell a friend Definitely join the community and thank you for listening Now let's get into some martial arts Okay, welcome back We are back, dragons I have another special one To intro season number two This is episode number one for season number two, and your guest is going to electrify us today. My homeboy CJ out in Thailand with Tiger Muay Thai is about to let you know about the energy. He was on a previous episode before, check that out. But you are entering the last dragon. CJ, what's up, fam? How you doing? What's up? What's up? What up? <laughs> I'm good, man. I'm good. I'm good. So what's up with you, man? What's up, man? What time is it there? Let people know the, the, the time stamp, the date, all the above. Uh, Right now it's 8.47 a.m. So it's right about 9 p.m. in St. Louis. Um, I'm, I've been up since about 6 a.m., you know, playing around on this computer, editing, playing around, getting, getting used to things this. going. I just got a new mic, so, you know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool, cool. So you uh last time we talked, man, you had you hadn't left for Thailand yet and you are officially there. What's yeah. up with that, man? You're there. What's up with Thailand? Man, it's beautiful. It's, it's when I first got here, you know, I was trying to get my bearings. So this past month I really kind of settled in, you know, started getting quotes and get, put them up on my walls, you know, putting my monikers up. Filling my own space, you know, and uh, as far as like on the getting out and about, I went out to the night market a couple times. You know, it's like back home in St. Louis, we got like flea markets, right? Right, <laughs> right, right. Yeah. So like out here, it's, it's kind of similar, but it's like the Thai version, you know, but it's everything there. It's like, like on one side, you got like food, you got a bunch of different, you know, tables and, and, yeah, and people, nice. like all type of anything you could think of right and is then it, is on the it, other side is it's the opposite they they selling merchandise they selling wow. their own their own their own like whatever they made or clothes or art or something you know so it's a cool little feeling going there can you go get stuff and like in resell can you resell that stuff too or no uh yeah i mean i'm pretty sure i could you know um is it like quality it, stuff though uh, some of it, yeah. Some of it, it's not. You know, it's like a flea market. Right. You know? Yeah, like, I got you. I yeah. got you. I like, got you. Yeah. So, it, but the the food, man, is just I love it. Like, and it's crazy. <laughs> My favorite thing, they somebody made some chicken, but it was I ain't had no chicken like that. <laughs> <laughs> what? Good, man. It was good, bro. It was like, yeah, man. So, so, uh, tell me on the Thailand tip. With the uh, the weather, what's the temperature there? Uh, so it's getting hot. It's getting hot right now. Like um, we coming out of the rainy season, so within like this next week, so it's getting warmer. 
hotter. The, the humidity is going down, so it's getting a little little more dry. It's still gonna be humid, but yeah, um, you're gonna feel the sun a little bit more. Like it's gonna be a little bit more burning, you know, if you're yeah. out there too much without a hat on or something. So, um, you wake up in the morning, it's a little bit hotter, it's a little bit drier than it was when I first got here. It's not as long rainy days, you know, the rain will come and go, um, but now it won't be like. A heavy downpour so it's crazy about uh three weeks ago though we had a big rain and uh streets were flooded um one of my teammates um so i try to be like i don't have much here right but like i try to be of service and i got a lot like be there and help people when i can so one of my teammates um he's kind of been looking out for me since i've been here but yeah He's living with, uh, it's three, I got three teammates who live in a home, two women and a guy. And uh, their house, where they live, is like at the bottom of the street. And it comes, it's like, if it comes, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So like a, the like, rain, yeah. it rained so hard that the house got flooded. And, wow. they, and, they're, and they literally were sitting on their beds on the water. Like it was knee high. That's crazy. Yeah, so, um, and their house was the only house that, that happened to on that street, you know, so yeah. um, that was crazy, so then, like, I hit him up, I was like, he was like, dude, we're sitting in the house, we cut out the electric, we could, we turned off the electric and everything, because, so it wouldn't, like, mess up the circuits or anything, and I was like, well, when you get a chance, if somebody, somebody can come through there, when you get out of there, you can crash at my place if you need to, you know, hop in the shower. I got a big king-size bed in my room, and, like, you know, I ain't got much here, but, like, if you need somewhere, yeah. So it was like, yeah, bro. Like That's, that's, that's love, was, man. That's good was, stuff, that's man. That's crazy. Out of all the people who seen, like, what was going on, like, very few people actually it was like, yeah, come over here or, you know, or reached out to try to see if we were actually, you know, okay. You know what I'm saying? yeah. So, I was like, yeah, man, it's no biggie, man. <laughs> if I need hook, something, you got me, so I got you, you know. Hook up the uh, the details on Tiger Muay Thai. Uh, tell us a little bit of the backstory. Uh, the, the, the listeners before kind of heard what happened. You got the scholarship, but kind of break down what has transpired. So now that you are there, you're there with how many people, how many people got selected and what is, what is going on going forward so that people can get new listeners can know what's going on. Yeah. So, um, in, in June, I earned a scholarship with Tiger Muay Thai. So I'll be here for a whole year. Um, and basically they pay for my, my training It's for free. They give me a meal card, uh, for a certain amount of money every couple of weeks, it's like a, it's like being on scholarship in college. Basically, you know, you got a meal plan, you got your food and living taken care of, and your training is for free. You know, so um, there were in total eight people selected: four for Muay Thai, four for MMA. I was within the four for MMA. Um, I think one of the guys didn't really hasn't come over. Or I don't know if he is. I don't really know what his situation is but a lot of um professionals it's kind of hard if they have um the reason why they wouldn't pursue an opportunity like this unlike me he's already in the ufc he's already established he has a management and he was already at a big gym so he's probably could be hindered contractually from coming mm. over here and he will have to pay money out of his pocket to be here or to get out of a contract or whatever he had going on so whenever he could do that he'll probably come over here for thailand you know but for right. me i'm not in the ufc i'm at the i'm i'm just a top prospect right now and uh it's literally the best situation for me so uh, as soon as i came i was able to come out here i did you know and it's a great situation for fighters who just need to not focus on anything but fighting and they're trying right. to get past that level of local and regional scene to a national scene and it's a great opportunity for them instead of having to work two jobs, three jobs, and which is fighting and doing another job, you know, right? Just focus on fighting. So, being what here, have you? Uh, it, it, oh, it's sorry. been great, you know. Yeah, being has been great, you know. And um, I so for the most part, all the Muay Thai guys who got the scholarship stayed. Like most of them didn't even go home. So, um, <laughs> I, I, and, I, and a lot of the guys who got picked were actually very close to my weight. So I see them all the time and. Um, 
a couple of them float over to the MMA area, and we kind of got a bond from tryouts. We we will sit down and we'll talk if we see somebody, one of us sitting down eating, and we come in, we'll sit at the same table, talk or something. You know, yeah. how's the training going? You got a fight coming up? <laughs> Literally, the first question most people out here ask you is like, "You have a fight? What's going on?" You know, <laughs> so, do, do you have a fight? You got something coming? What, uh, what you got going on? I'm trying to fight at the end of December. Um, around December 29th, but nothing for sure yet. Trying to fight okay. out in China. Um, but it's, it's just it's tough getting a fight uh, out here sometimes. You know, I had a fight lined up a month ago, and I got staff. Um, I got bit by a mosquito behind my ear. So that was kind of like a, a rough little time because I was like, right? It was just bad timing. It was bad timing. Yeah. I, was in a, I was feeling great. Training was going great, everything, but, you know. Something like that happened, you know, and it's very humid out. It's a lot of moisture in the air. So you get a bite or a cut and then it's bacteria with the humid uh, humidity. We all have uh, staff on our skin already. So yeah, yeah. with the uh, bacteria and it being so humid, it's easy for you can get so you can get those uh, things like staff or something. So, right. Right. so, so with your um, the guys that you came over with. And the guys that you're training with now, um, you guys have kept this bond and this connection going. Uh, what what are they? And I should ask you this: What is your weight class? So my listeners know. What do you fight out of? What weight class? Yeah, um, officially I'm a 125 flyweight. It's flyweight and, and uh, mixed martial arts. And okay. That I walk around probably about 140 to 143 weight. Gotcha. But I fight, my fight weight is around 125. You know, um, with fighting, if you see somebody on TV and they say that they're a featherweight and they're fighting at 145, that person does not walk around at that weight. That person probably walks around 170, you know, right. uh, normally. And with fighting, that's a big aspect of mixed martial arts. Not so much in boxing, but in mixed martial arts is weight cutting. You know, you have to, it's a, weight cutting is an art in itself. You know, you got to do it correctly, healthy. Yeah. It's a healthy way to do it. You can't just stop drinking water and stop eating. You know, people think they, we, we can do that. No, we have to still water load. It's a process that comes along with it. You know, so when you see fighters who take fights on a week notice, that's tough. Right. You know, that's tough um, because they had to immediately, it doesn't matter what they were doing, they could have been out or just enjoying time with family or whatever, and they got a big opportunity and seven days notice, you know, that's why you got to stay ready with this game. Right. This, this this fight game, boxing and MMA is very similar. You got to stay ready. You got to stay consistent always, you know, because I, you never know when you're going to get an opportunity. So, you know, you just got always got to stay ready. Dude, I saw... I mean, just thinking about what you just said made me think about a couple different things when that dropping weight. Um, it, it's almost like sometimes you can't even really take long vacations because if somebody give you a call saying, hey, I need you to be a backup person just in case, you're going to need to be at a certain weight. You And that 15 pounds ain't no joke. Like you say, within a week, it's got to be hard as hell. That's yeah. almost impossible sometimes, right? Like, yeah. That's just crazy. Yeah, you got to think for women. When for women, like, um, so I, I was thinking about this because, um, you know, like women, if they have like a cycle or something and then they, they care retaining extra water and then they got to cut weight, you know, you got to think about that. You know what I'm saying? So that's like, crazy. Weight cutting is no joke, you know, so like it's it's just it's, it, and it's not the most healthy thing either, you know, right, dehydrating because right. you when you get to a level of dehydrating your body you dehydrating your brain, you know, yeah. It's not a healthy process, um, no matter how you go about it sometimes. So, like, you definitely want to be always hydrating, always doing things the right way. So that's why it's, it's good to stay consistent and stay yeah. working so you don't have to go to that other end and try to make up for what you wasn't doing. Right, right, right. Now, if, I had, if you had an opportunity to say – uh, there were like three top things that you learned and it doesn't have to be related to fighting specifically. If you want to have fighting as the three things, it doesn't matter. What are the three things that you already grasped and taken 
like said, man, that was very powerful. I learned so much. Or this move has been a new thing for me that I didn't even know I had in my arsenal. I got this new thing in my tool belt. What, what, what would your three top things be? Uh, since coming to Thailand? Yeah, just since coming to Thailand. Yeah. Okay. Um, so for the most part, um, honestly, if I'm being completely honest, it's been about being confident in what I already have. Um, a lot of people out here, um, they know who they are and what they're doing. And um, they come out here to learn a skill that they don't have. I was pretty well-rounded before I got here. Um, so for me, it's been being more confident in the tools that I have. So when I get to spar with guys who are top in the UFC or top fighters in the world, um, when I first got here, I was kind of like, I wasn't starstruck. I was just a little more tentative, a little more, you know, uh, reserved in my right. sparring. Um, and lately, within probably about the last month, five weeks, I really started like just coming into my own. I've always um, got, I always get to practice at least 10, 15, a half an hour before practice just so I can get settled in and get ready for practice. You know, I hate showing up five minutes before practice. You right. know, in the past, so, okay, so that's one I can't say. In the past, like, when I was back home, I would always be commuting um, a little bit far or, you know, just be harder to get to the gym, you know, and, um, and or I would procrastinate on my time a little bit more than I should, you know, um, or be coming from work. And so, like, I walk into practice, and it would be, like, five minutes before I practice, and everything's a hustle, you know, like, going into right, practice. Right, right. You're not settled in. You can't, <coughs> you can't just go, right? Right. Out here, out here, man, I, I, I know when practice is. I don't have anything else to do. So, number one on my list, I always try to get there in a time where I get settled in and I'm ready to go. And I'm just focused. I'm Larry, like flow and receive everything that coach is saying that day or then my practice part. Just as much as coach, practice partners have stuff to offer that you won't even, you know, like you'll just see them doing something or, you know, so you just got to be very in a very receiving. you like, yeah, yeah. where you can like see everything that's going on, but also have, you know, just be a good partner as well. You know, that's great, man. You, you gave me like four or five. So you gave me confidence. Number one, I got punctual being able to, uh, be there early, not only being punctual on time, but being there early to be able to receive all the good information, being a great partner and all the stuff that they could be able to offer you as well as, uh, you, you said one more thing, but that stands out, but, uh, Oh, and standing in, standing in your own, like feeling like, uh, not being you, like you said, you wasn't starstruck or timid. It was just one of those things where being able to say, I'm confident enough to know my skill sets and be, being feeling good about it, huh? That's awesome. Yeah, man. man it's, it's crazy how many, um, people complimented me like, like, dang, bro, you, you know that like, or they like, they'll tell me, um, like, bro, you, you pretty good at that, huh? Or something. Or they'll ask me a question about something and I'm like, damn, bro, you're in the UFC. <laughs> like, <laughs> hey, this person, this person fighting in one championship, or this person's here and they um and going with me. They'll be like, "Well, wow. like they'll say something, compliment me. They'll say something because yeah. I'm I'm a very like if I'm being honest, I I don't talk about myself often and I don't like boast what I can do. So when it starts happening or when I do something and people compliment me, I like I I. I I'm, I take that in because I'm like, yeah, they like, see, because I'm like yeah. a show you type of person, you know. When I was in high school, we had three captains my senior year on the track team. I was the dude that led, led by example. Like, I could talk, you know, when I talk, people listen, but like, for the most part, I led by example. They seen CJ running the miles, CJ putting the work in, and like, everything that I did, I tried to lead by example in my races, in practice. Before practice, after practice, stretching, yeah. everything, drills, everything. And then my other teammates, they were more so the speakers. Like, they would get, like, yo, vocal. They, they, yeah. They, they were more vocal with it, you know. And I, I could be vocal, you know. But for me, I was more, in high school, I wasn't as, like, vocal. Yeah, as yeah, I, yeah. 
you know, until like later on in my senior year. But like I wasn't as uh, that vocal leader that I am like now and that I can be and that That's I good. could, you know. Yeah. So, so tell me your tell me your toughest moment since you've been there. What's the moment that you said, man, that was just so much, but it's made me stronger. Like it was just like. God, I mean, the stab moment is a big deal. Like having a fight and you catch a stab, but is there anything else that stands out? Yeah, outside of, um, so for, you know, getting, outside of me getting stabbed two weeks before I was supposed to have a fight, three, two and a half, three weeks before I was supposed to have a fight. And uh, I was weighing about 140 and it was going to be at 125. So I was like, when you take staff, you're on antibiotics. Antibiotics make it harder for you to cut weight. You know, yeah. it makes it harder. That makes the whole process harder. So it's like if I can just start getting rid of this a little bit, where I can um, start cutting weight. So when I start cutting weight, I'm not holding on to anything extra. My body's able to go, but it just didn't work out that way. So yeah. that was tough in itself. That whole process. But my toughest moments uh, here is um i haven't had really any tough moments but i have i've had some great sparring sessions um and i have some i don't like sparring people who like um who fight when they spar like i like sparring against people who are uh they understand how to spar you know like float, like flow like we flow grappling beat brazilian jiu-jitsu right like that yeah like yeah exactly so you you know um or and listeners may not know but when you get on a, a mat, you know, you got people who sometimes who um, aren't experienced as well at, be, at being a teammate or at a particular art, martial art. And so say it's their first time in a wrestling gym or first year, first month in a jujitsu school or rolling on a mat with someone, they kind of go harder than they need to or they... They're just going hard in the moments they should be breathing and, and doing technique, you know, right, and right. Um, they're kind of wild, out of place with it, you know, and that's great with um, sometimes with sparring, if you can understand who you're sparring, because if you can tame the wild beast, the wild person, you know, they're a lot uh, very, they're more unpredictable than somebody who's probably going to be skilled in setting traps up sometimes, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you can understand that. But um, it can be difficult, you know, if you don't know that the sparring partner you're going with. So my example I'm using here is um, you go with guys from different parts of the world who have a different mentality about sparring. Right, 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 right. So they come into it and they're like, it's a fight, or they come. It's a into, fight, hundred percent. Fight, you know, hundred percent. Like, yeah, yeah I got like, you. And, and for one, I'm I'm probably one of the smaller guys in out there and in sparring. Like, I'm not a small guy. I look bigger than what I am because I'm tall. I'm five nine, and I just look bigger than what I am. So I get guys who are so. I, I weigh about 62 kilograms, which is about 140 pounds. And so you got guys in there, they weighing around 70 kilograms, which is a lot more. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, and so like I'll be sparring and like, so at the end of the round, a guy will come up and like, you want next round with me? And I'm like, uh, what's your KG? And like 72 KG, 72 KG. Come on, like, we go light, we go light. But like, <laughs> no, nah, man, like, you know, <laughs> like I had to learn. So at first, when I first got here, I was like, yeah, cool, let's go, right? That that cool, nice part of me, like that part of me that's like, all right, yeah, sure. Now I be, I'm like, no, nah, I'm good. I'm like, I'm, I weigh this and I tell them, you know, because I noticed like you got people coming in from, people come in for camps, they come in for different times and, they're, and they don't care about like your health or anything they're in there to spar and they feel like they got to get something out you know so like yeah, I, had to, yeah. I had to really take my sparring in a in a manner of all right this is what i weigh and i make sure i go with people near my weight so even if they do go to that level i can maintain i can i can handle that but i can't handle that if they're bigger it's so it's hard man like i just don't want to get yeah. injured or hurt, you know so you spar differently so that no, that's, I understand uh, that. Toughest, toughest time here was going with someone who was bigger, and they was just like all over the place with it, you know. And I was just like, 
it pissed me off. But I and I and I actually started talking to them. You know, I was you know like <laughs> like talking shit while I was sparring with them. You know, like but it was like I wasn't doing it like out of a like an ego thing. It was out of a like all right, this is where we at, this is where we going. And I was just kind of like talking to them like I was Nate Diaz type. You know, like, yeah. Wow. You know, like that's exactly what type of scene it was. And coach said something to me afterward. He was like, you know, you don't have to talk to him. I was like, coach, he knows he's bigger than me for one, and he's just going too too hard. You know, and like I just had to go to that place. I, I mean, it just happened. You know, <laughs> like, yeah. but I try to, you know, keep that. You know, so how's it? How's that BJJ man? How you? How your ground game been going? Um, I haven't been in the gi because I don't have my gi out here. I didn't bring it from St. Louis, but uh, as far as jujitsu, I've really been focusing on my technique. I've been focusing on. Uh, I've been doing a lot of uh, my my one of my best uh, fighting teammates and friends. Um, uh, we're not as close as we was when he was in St. Louis, but uh, we still keep in contact. Luis Pena, when he came back home, he taught us like Khabib control and like uh, some things that he learned when he was training with Khabib, and they mm-hmm. like. Kind of with my eyes up to a different way of control on the ground. So since I've been out here, I've been watching a lot of videos on just trying to control people's hip um, and their their lower half of their body when I'm grappling. And mm-hmm. so I've been really focused when I'm in position. I had a talk with uh, Coach George Hickman. So George Hickman and Frank Hickman are brothers, and there are our two main mixed MMA coaches here. Mm-hmm. And um, they have a wrestling background, but they they're pretty well uh, versed at everything. And um, Coach George was talking to me, and uh, it was like he saw me after during practice. It's like towards the end of practice, and he looked at me in my face. He was like, "What's wrong? You alright? You alright?" I was like, "It was like I was just standing there, like everybody. It was a break time, and I was standing. I was just kind of like I was thinking about. I was processing through my head what just happened, and." Um, what I was trying to work on within the next round. It was like, you all right, you good? I was like, yeah. I was like, just thinking, just thinking about this, this position and technique. It was like, okay, I, I don't know. Sometimes I look at you and I can't tell. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, no, coach, you're like, I'm good, man. I'm, I'm, I'm actually really good. I'm just processing, you know, these positions. And then, so he was like, yeah, man, you're good. He was like, Charles, you're, you're good. Like, you just need to, you know, you, you're good, man. You like, you got some great skill. You just, it's all right, and I was like, "Yeah, I'm good." I was like, "I just, you know, <laughs> working through it." So, I just shout out to Luis. And, shout out yeah, to yeah. Luis, man. Yeah, he uh, yeah. He, that's a good dude. He's been doing his thing in the UFC. Uh, where, where, uh, where would you say now, um, when it comes to just competition over there, and what you've seen from where you're at now, the competition, uh, just in general, how do you feel like the all the different people that's come to Tiger Muay Thai, uh. How's that been on the competition level as well? And not just on the sparring tip, but even with you individually, but the people you've seen just physically watched come in and compete against each other. Yeah, um, you got a lot of guys that so like right now, one of the big gyms is City Kickboxing, which is in uh New Zealand. And that's where Israel Adesanya is from. Um uh, uh Alex Volkanovski, he's going to be fighting Max Holloway, this next big card, UFC card, for the mm-hmm. for the featherweight title. Uh, he, was, he was in the two, Alex Volkanovski was in the 2014 Tiger Muay Thai tryouts, and, wow. he, and he made the team. And now, five years later, he's fighting for a title. So That's he amazing. Still has, he still has that connection with Tiger. When I came here for tryouts, we sat down and talked for like an hour, eight, and me and him were talking. And uh, and that's when I first met him. And he came out here uh, to start his camp for this fight. He started his camp at Tiger, and then he went back to New Zealand. He was here for about 10, 12 days, just getting him work, getting his foundation started for his camp. And then he went back to New Zealand. You know, so he's out there with Dan Hooker, um, Brad Craig Wardell, who comes out here too. He just had an excellent fight in the UFC. Like put wow. on, he had he got fight of the night. Got he like excellent striking performance. You know, but he's very well rounded. But he comes out here, and and he was out here uh, when Alex was out here to start his camp, and uh, he ran MMA practice and showed us a little technique with our feet. So like I'm seeing these guys who was in the same position as me, and now seeing where they are now, you know, and five years later, and it's just like 
Damn, man, like, yeah, like, so, <laughs> to be honest, I, I'm, I'm past the phase of uh, worried about getting to the UFC or worried about getting to a big promotion. I know it's going to happen. Like, I used to say that. I used to say it, but I just, I know it. I feel it. I know it's going to happen. I'm like, yeah. I and the biggest confidence boost has been going with Peter Yan, who's a top five, uh, 135 right now and sparring with him and and like he's kind of giving me head nods at time like yeah that was good you know and he's not like a vocal guy because of the communication barrier but like we'll get done sparring and now he'll start trying to like play around with me and like like tie up with me and do throws and like playing around with me you know like <laughs> it's stuff like that you know and yeah. or we didn't have that type of relationship but now it's been like a I've been like one of the main guys who, who spars with him for this fight camp, and we're getting in great rounds. He has his moments, obviously. He's really good. And then I have yeah. my sometimes, and I get done with that day, and I'm like talking. I'm like, damn, man, I did. <laughs> hey, I felt good. You know, like I felt I did some good things, and I knew I did good things, you know? Yeah, and, man. And I felt them. So, like, now I'm just like, I know it's going to happen. I'm not stressing the fact of, all I need is fights. So that's what I'm stressing. Let me get some yeah, fights. Get some fights. I'll fight anybody. Dude. Anybody. anybody. I'll fight right now at this moment. I will literally fight any 125er in the world. Demetrius Johnson included. I will fight all of them. I have so much confidence right now. I'm not saying that, you know, like, I have confidence in me. You know, my skills. Yeah. What I'm doing. And I don't care what anyone has to say because... I see the guys that I'm going with. I I know my work ethic. I know where I was at. I know where I am now, and I know what I need to work on. You know, so yeah. it's like, and I and I and I see the level of things that I need to work on is not as big. The gap is not as big as I thought it was. And I feel myself getting stronger. I see myself getting stronger, and I'm getting the kudos from people who've been there, who've who've done it, who see Coach Hickman, who sees guys come through all the time, and t and he's telling me. It's all right, Charles, you, you're great, bro. Like, your skill set, like, is great. You know, we just got to get stronger and work on certain things in certain positions, but, like, you have it, you know? So, That's like... That's good, man. Yeah, man, it's it's it's, it's dope. That you, fighting aspect out here, man, right now, I'm just at an all-time high, so that's why I've really been focused. I've been, like... Dude, i just been, like, kind of just in my own world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah dude, man. Dude, you... Did you did you see uh the the fight uh Lucas had and he he subbed the guy with the buggy yeah. choke second his second buggy choke <laughs> that's crazy second in the MMA history I think uh, right I, like, and it's I don't know of anyone else pulling that move off I, after he did it the first time they said nobody had ever done it I don't think anyone else has done it since and so now he has two his video is already like. Um, so Eddie Bravo reposted it and it already had like over a hundred thousand views. <laughs> yeah, crazy, right? <laughs> but then like uh that that couple like by the time I saw it, it had already been a whole day. Yeah. And it was already like ninety something thousand views before the day was over with. And like I was looking down the comments and people were like, What is that? And, like, <laughs> and I'm like, Yeah, that's my dog. you know, like Lucas so, story about Lucas Clash. Lucas Clay. Lucas yes. Clay, my dude, um, the panda, the panda man. <laughs> he, um, <laughs> that dude, was the very first dude I ever uh, sparred with at St. Charles MMA. He was in high school, uh, probably about seventeen, and I was, no, he was probably about eighteen, and I was twenty. And uh, Coach Mike put me with with him. I was like, why well, coach put me with this little dude? You know, like in my brain, I was like, but then the very, this is the very first time I ever saw him. I was like, but I didn't know Coach Mike at the time. And I was only coming on Sundays to spar. And I went with Luke and like, we had a great spar. Like he was a different fighter than, than he is now, though. He used to try to take your head off then, you know, yeah. he's more calculated and just technical all the way through. And, uh, but that dude right there, man. That's my guy. So, like, <laughs> him have success, knowing his story, uh, having had conversations with him, and he doesn't, he's not an ego type of guy. Like, right, he, right. He'll, he'll tell you, you know, I'm, but he wants to go in there. He loves, uh, 
the thing about Lucas, you'll never know it, but like Lucas loves a fight. He wants to. He don't mind getting hit. He wants to fight. Like he just loves yeah. to. Fight. He wants to be in. If he had, I think if Lucas had, um, once he gets to that level, he he feels happy at uh, as far as promotion wise. I think if he had, if he was known for having like just great fights with people, like not, I don't even know about like winning a belt, but I know he would probably want like the BMF belt. But like Lucas is the type of dude he just wants to fight great fights. Yeah, and like yeah. look good and not have great fights. And I don't even know if he cares. I know he wants to win, but if he has a great fight and he loses, Lucas is not the dude that's gonna sit there and be like, Oh, I lost that fight. Like he's yeah, he's he's gonna be hard on himself probably when he gets wherever he's going, but like he's not gonna be moping around. He's gonna be like, Yeah, man, I you know, and he's gonna be on to the next. So like yeah, yeah. I that's my dude, man. I like his whole mentality about everything. Yeah, man, I'm gonna get him on, man. I'm gonna get him on a podcast for sure. I'm excited about his story. I'm sure he got a great story to tell, yeah. man. And I, I just remember seeing all y'all like it's just this crazy memory. I'm up here going to do my thing, rolling, and I just see all this. I mean, we just had a good core of brothers that was at the gym at the time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's good. It's just a good feeling, man. Now here, here I have to ask you this because. I know you saw the fight. I know you saw the boxing match this past weekend. Yeah, that knocked out. <laughs> <laughs> I was telling people, like, bro, I don't care how many rounds he loses, gonna knock that dude out. Like, it's, dude. It, it doesn't he too. It's just not gonna happen, man. Dude, gonna... Ortiz, Ortiz looked like he was on a mission. He looked like he had a plan. It don't he matter. came in with a plan, man. It don't he matter. Came in, he came in with a plan. Deontay and, Wilder, I keep telling people, is one of the greatest punchers ever. Natural strength. Like, just naturally think. I don't know how he would have done against a young, young George Foreman. Because young George Foreman was Ooh, probably the nastiest. He was probably the nastiest dude ever outside of Mike Tyson. Right. As far as... Young guys that were just naturally powerful hitters. Mike Tyson knew how to get to an angle. George Foreman will just knock you out. Right, you know? exactly. That's why, exactly. I said, that's why I said about George Foreman. So that's what he we, who he reminds me of. And I met, uh, I met Deontay Wilder at. Saw uh, the photo. I had to ask yeah. you, what's up with that? I met him when I was in Atlanta. Man, I had a boxing match against one of his homeboys, and uh, one of his little cats or whatever. I guess they know each other, and uh, so he was there to support him. And I fought him. I felt like I want to fight. Deontay felt like I want to fight, you know. Um, but I didn't get that decision, you know. Yeah. Um, it went to the other guy. It was a hometown fight. But uh, I was talking to his partner. Like, I, the whole, like, after the first round, I started talking to the dude who was his partner. And um, I took all his confidence away. Like, I was, I was boxing him trying to outbox him in the first round. He had more experience than me. I was boxing well. And yeah. he was a little bit bigger than me. I fought all my boxing matches like 140. So that was my walk around weight. Um, he was a little strong dude. But uh, I started talking to him, get him in his head, make him throw shots that he wouldn't normally throw. And I'm just stepping around, stepping through him, putting my hands up, everything glancing off. And then I'm, I'm going to the body. Then I'm talking to him. And when he lands something and it glances off, I look at him and say, nope, that wasn't, you know, and I'm talking to him, and Deontay told me after the fight, Deontay was like, yeah, when you start talking to him, you change the whole fight. I see you over there, you was, you was doing your thing. <laughs> <laughs> and he started laughing. <laughs> then we had our own little conversation because uh, he, his his sparring partner, one of his main sparring partners is Stefan Jabari Shaw, who's, uh, I believe, 12-0 and heavyweight right now. So, uh, he was signed, I think he signed with DeBella right now. I'm not sure, but, uh, man, Stephen Shaw is going to be one of the best heavyweights known very Seriously. soon. Seriously. Like, people Seriously. will know him very soon. But he's 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 one of Deontay's. Deontay flies him out every camp. His past probably about four or five fights, I think, um, to to spar. He flies him out there, and they have, that's his main sparring partner, you know. So, like, Steph is younger than me, about 27, I think. I think he's two years younger than me. And his dad, Brian Shaw and Buddy Shaw, are very well known through uh, SCL boxing culture, bo boxing history, like SCL. Um, yeah, yeah. And um, 
he just got a lot of lineage in his family and a lot of wealth of knowledge and boxing. So when I was home, that's who was helping me. And that's who I, he went to Hazelwood East with me. He was two years younger than me. He played baseball, but I didn't know him in high school. But we saw each other in passing. So then when, like, later on down the road, now when I'm a fighter now doing stuff that he's been doing most of his life, you know, I was like, hey, hey we was around each other didn't even know. He was like, That's yeah, crazy. you was with CJ. Like, yeah, you was CJ, man. Like, you was always running. I mean, like, bro, you was always winning stuff. You was always on announcements at school. People were in the newspapers. So, like, yeah, it's crazy how far, you know, things have come now. So, but we had our own side, side conversation, me and Deontay Wilder, about him. I was like, yeah, man, you, you swallow my, my, my partner, my brother, my, my dude, Stefan. Like, that's my dog. He was like, yeah. yeah. It was like, come here. He was sitting on the, like, on the, like, stage area, you know. And then, like, so I went up there because first his brother was kind of, like, in his little posse or whatever. It's like, nah, you know, he ain't trying to have people up here. But then he was like, nah, right. you go ahead. Right. And he come up here, you know, like, we had our conversation. That was cool as hell. He one of the most down-to-earth humble dudes I ever met like he took wow, pictures wow. with somebody who came up there he took he even had a short small conversation with him and like he was not on no prima donna I'm too high for this thing he was literally one of the most humble champions I've ever seen sitting in just it was a huge venue it was a, it was a local venue in Atlanta and you know so like it was it was really cool you know that was a great experience. <laughs> that's that's wild, me. man. I saw I saw you on the photo after he won the fight. I was just like, "What? What? How you running in?" <laughs> it was like, it was like, dude, you 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 a fool. You silly, man. Like, I like you though. I like you though. Man, I was that's like, cool. Hey. <laughs> that's, hey, hey, that's that's like, hey, it's crazy, man. But you live in these moments, man. That people, I'm living through you right now, man. I ain't gonna lie. Like, I see you doing your fight thing. I've always been a competitor, and that's like times ten. What you getting done and they, these memories you creating, if people wish they could have these memories, man. So keep it up. Keep it going, man. We rooting for you here. We know you got all family support. You know what I'm saying? Enter the Last Dragon loves you. We had, you know what I'm saying? Like, we yeah. appreciate everything you got popping, man. Like 100%. So yeah. now, yeah. I got to know. I got to know, man. Here's the, here's the need to know moment. Drum roll. Uh... When it comes to, and this is a basic silly question, man. I'm trying to be, I'm, I'm trying to be on some goofy fun stuff. Um, when it comes to animation, because you in you, you in a place where it's just a little different, uh, or no, nah, just gaming or, or just fun. What is CJ's fun time outside of fighting? What have you done that's been fun? Animation. <laughs> cartoons i heard you might have had a new hobby that's what i'm trying to lead you towards <laughs> trying to guide you towards that hobby what's, what's your what's your free time consist of? it's me the energy baby <laughs> <laughs> um, um, i've always been a writer more poetic you know young like brother brother to the night type stuff you know love All jokes right. you know but um i just been kind of i got this mic as you can see yeah so um I've been making music, you know, it's, I got a Mac, I brought my Mac out here when I um, traveled here, so I was able to bring that, and so, as far as Mac and Apple products go, you get GarageBand, which is a great free app, you know, and in there you can make beats, you can uh, record yourself, do audio and everything, so literally, within this past three weeks, I've gotten a microphone, I got me a, a 12 volt phantom power Thing, so the mic sound a little bit better. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. I ordered me a little MIDI keyboard, you know, a small keyboard to play stuff on and uh, make beats. And uh, within this app, you can learn how to play the keyboard as well. So I just, wow. when, I, when I do anything, man, I've figured out about myself. I didn't realize it till later on in life. But, like, when I do it and I'm really, like, in something, I'm in it. Like, it takes my everything like i'm in it so like for a while growing up it was like playing madden <laughs> like right right the gaming and right lose, and lose at madden you hear me like i didn't lose my dad taught me how to play madden like i used to play madden like every day after school and whenever i play against friends or anybody i smash them 21 skunk right, <laughs> right <laughs> game right, up right. <laughs> half time well so like i was in it that was my thing you know now i've gotten older i don't really play um 
Madden or anything like that anymore. I play like League of Legends, something that'll take my mind away. Or and now, since I've been here in Thailand, man, I just been like on this whole creativity kick. So I've been in Adobe Illustrator, dusting up my skills, trying to refigure that program out because I learned it in college. Yeah. Um, I learned it in college, and I learned how to do two D like film, like uh, make a two D like cartoony type loop. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I haven't touched it since, but I had a whole little. 30 second loop movie as you would call it and it was a loop that I did in college and I loved that you know I'm so I'm like I'm getting back into that you know logo designs I've always been doing Photoshop I'm always on so make I've made a, a I designed a shirt for a fighter you know uh Brittany Cloudy I designed her last shirts um that she came out with her quiet storm logo and a shout shirt. out to her shout out to her yeah. things of Cali she just won a fight uh, she got another fight in a couple weeks from now. She's cutting weight, so she's doing great things out in California. So uh, shout out to her. And then uh, another partner of mine, I design their stuff. So it's like, it, it's cool seeing people that like what you do. Yeah. You know, and like what you're doing. And and so um, on top of that, I'm just a creative person. So when I got into start making music, um, I've had people tell me, you got something to say. I like what you said. And you you don't got a, a voice that's too high pitched. I can stand your voice. I'm like cool, <laughs> like cool, like. <laughs> so I was like, let me let me let me make some music. You know, my dad right. always storyteller. My dad always been a storyteller, and um, I think I get a little bit of that from him. You know, like we're going on car rides to for track meets and stuff. He'll tell us stories about him in the uh, DMV area, growing up with his partners, or being in the Marines, or just anything you know from him growing up all these childhood stories you know and it's just like that artist st storytelling that my dad has that he's yeah. that he got from i don't know where my dad got it from but he's he's definitely a storyteller you know he always got a story about everything so i feel like uh i i, I took a little bit of that from him <laughs> that's cool hey what's your pop's name man what's your dad's name reggie mcneil so like my dad he um uh, he's got a whole on Instagram, his name is DCSDG, which is <laughs> dynamic, dynamic core speed and development group. He's he literally coaches up athletes, um, and his 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 brand is DCSDG, and uh, so like I'm in the process of making a logo for him so he can get that mm -hmm. off and and everything. So, all right, yeah. so. So my fans need to know how to follow this whole story. We need a quick breakdown. Of course, I'm going to put the information in the show notes, but we need to know how do the people get to you as soon as possible and continue to ride the wave that's going on with Mr. Energy. So tell us how to get to you, man. Yeah, man. Just on, uh, on Instagram, my name is Charles Johnson, MMA 125. It's, it's literally what's cool is. All the people I've been meeting out here who want to add me, and I, and they put it in their phone. I'm like one of two people to pop up. I don't know if it's just because I'm in Thailand <laughs> or what, but I'm like I must be doing something if I'm one of them top people that's popping up now. So that's, that's cool. cool to see. But it's Charles Johnson MMA 125 on Instagram. That's the main platform I've been putting stuff out. I, I'm I'm gonna start doing some a little bit more vlogging. I'll be doing a little bit of rapping on there. Do a little bit. All of right. I'm just a human, just like everybody else. I like creating. I like putting things into the world. You know, I like I like putting putting things out. You know, it's creating something. I don't like just receiving the world when I wake up. So that's what I've been on. That's that's the whole energy moniker. I N N E R capital G. You know, no you got you got to put something out into the world. So I'm trying to you know own that. Man, we we are all artistic in our own way and that creativity when you're allowed to express your art like me i had it since even high school it's funny you talk about it but like this is something i did back in the day i did yeah, this that's pop joint you know what i'm saying <laughs> that's a that's a wood burn <laughs> joint you know yeah, what i mean yeah yeah i remember seeing that at your crib i remember asking yeah, i was like hey man what's that what's you up with that right <laughs> y'all yeah. doing artwork on the low I ain't telling nobody yeah. Yeah, man so that i mean it's real when you able to be creative man that's the like it's it's real man it's the reason why i love art i love animation i love gaming i love fighting everything is an art man everything like you even said cutting weight 
you know what I'm saying? It's like it's an art to it. It's it's not it's a science to yeah. some people, but it's it's special. You know what I'm saying? And when you're able to release your creativity, I'm excited about what you got coming, man, on every level. I just can't I just can't believe like this was like almost we're coming up on month six. Like you've been over there four and a half, almost five months now. You yeah, know what I'm saying? It's fast too. <laughs> don't even seem real, man. Yeah, it's going my fast and like, like every day that I'm here, I'm getting a little bit more settled. I, I'm literally just now getting settled in, to be honest, feeling comfortable with everything around me, people, you know, and just owning my space, you know, owning right. my space a little bit, you know, to move my room around about a couple times in the last three weeks. You know, when I start getting into creative mode, one big thing, if you're going to be doing anything, you're going to be creating something. Your space you have around you, whether it's the people, your job, whatever, when you get into your creative area, you need to be comfortable. If you're not comfortable, it's not ever, it's not going to come out. It's going to come out, but it ain't going to come out the way at its best as it should. You hear me? So That's a nugget. To make sure when you create it, you comfortable in your space. You own in that space. That's you. This is everything in here right now is vibrations moving towards energy. Charles Johnson, like, what, like representation of me like my room show, is, show that back wall what's the what's the thing i saw early on the back wall yeah, for, that's my what's that's that my man three P's, that's my three p's moniker it's kind of hard to get stuff to stay on this wall but uh it's three p's and then it's prayer positivity and perseverance what's those and, what's uh, that mean to you man what's that mean to you why why do you start with prayer why do you go to positive positivity and what's up with perseverance talk talk to us man yeah, so when I started this in college, you know, um, it was just my own little journey within myself. First time being out on your own, but I needed something that I can attach myself to within myself to keep me focused um, and uh, keep me like what what represents me, you know. And uh, I was like, I do pray. I'm not a a very religious person. Never have been. Um, for my family and everything, but I'm very like I got faith. I got right. believe something more. I believe I got believing. Just use yeah. that word in itself. Belief, right? Yeah. So yeah. what's prayer? What are you praying? What are you praying to? What, you believe in something more. You believe in something. And you when you pray, whether it's a small thing like yeah, I really hope this is going. You know, like what are you praying to? You got to believe in something more. You got to believe in something bigger culminating into something better happening right so that's what the prayer is about right the positivity you prayer goes into positivity and when you pray more you just feel a little bit more positive about the thing that's going on around you you True. feel like you put that into the air you feel like somebody looking out for you whether you it's in religion or whatever you pray into the universe whatever you think it is you just feel that positivity is coming back to you that you're putting out or whatever you're putting out, whatever you're praying towards. You're going to be praying the money for all I care. <laughs> right, <laughs> you know? right. But you just feel like you're going to have a positive source of income coming back in from that, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's when the positivity comes. After you start praying, you get a little bit more positive about the things around you. And then you got to know that through that positivity, you still got to have things that you have to persevere through. You're going to still have things that's going to happen that you're gonna have to be like, okay, that happened, but we just gotta keep this, you know, keep this ball rolling, keep everything going. It's every day it's not gonna be great. Everything is not it may not happen tomorrow, may not happen next week, but I gotta know that I'm a persevere and see see like my dad always said, keep the end goal in sight. You know? Yeah. So like yeah. when I talk to people, I talk to them about why are you doing this or you're not doing this for this right now, right? So why are you expecting results tomorrow? Like, just know that you're pursuing whatever that is. What are you trying to do? Okay, you're trying to jump over that those that box set right there. Okay, well, like, did you at least get up to the box at, on top of it this time? Like, did you get close to that? Yeah, all right. Is that better than last week? All right, so what you looking all upset about? It ain't going to happen. You got to enjoy the. You got to breathe through this process. Breathing. Breathe through this process. Feel this process. Know what's going on. Feel this. Yeah, yeah. You know? That's, like, you got to feel loud. it. You got to be in it. You got to be in it and persevere through it, you know? That's and, live, and man. When, it's, when you get there, you're going to be happy, man. You're going to be happy. You, them three Ps going to be something you can hold on to. Everybody can hold on to. You hear me? 
That's yeah, that's all, everybody can use that. Hey, hey, that was another nugget by Mr. CJ, Mr. Energy, and them three Ps. And it was so rock star. He said it himself. He's got the prayer, positivity, and perseverance. So uh, I have to basically say you have been one of the, the the most awesome interviewees. You know what I'm saying? As I've been doing this thing, man, I've been really enjoying it. Each time I sit down with you, I, I'm constantly learning uh, some different things. Like today, I really just I, I just took a lot out of out of out of that 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 statement because I think it goes along the way I built my podcast. You know what I'm saying? In the last dragon really wants the listeners to know that they can be comfortable in their own skin. And I really think about what you just talked about being even when your own creativity, everything is kind of like being art. If you're gonna create this art or be creative, even being comfortable in your own space. Like you just took it to hey, okay. you got your own your own world. You know what I'm saying? Like that's 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 real powerful, man. I think that's I think my listeners really appreciate that. That's real. That's super.